can't tell you how much we appreciate you tuning into our videos and watching. And this is going to be the second video in our series on building a storage container. We've actually got a beautiful day today, so we are going to do the second video on our storage container, which is windows and doors. It's going to be three parts to it. One, cutting the holes. Two, actually uh, doing the framing for the windows and doors. And then lastly, installation of the windows and doors and sealing it up. The first thing is cutting holes. Now, this took a lot longer than what we thought. And we had no shelter here. So cutting the holes actually took three or four separate trips. Our biggest bottleneck is time. And in retrospect, we would have done things a little bit differently. And so that's kind of the value in our channel. Many times people tell you what to do, even if they're doing it for their very first time, because how many times do you do a storage container? I'm here to tell you what we would have done differently. So in cutting the holes, you have to figure out what kind of tool that you're going to want to use. I've been dreaming about reasons to buy tools. And now, finally, I've got some of those reasons. When you're watching videos, a lot of people use plasma cutters, but that was not for me. I've never used one before. The amount of energy that one takes, we don't have any electricity up here. And many of the channels that we watched said, yeah, you can use an angle grinder. You're just gonna go through a lot of discs. So I stepped up to the plate. I got the DeWalt 20 volt max uh, system and started off with the right angle grinder, bought two five milliamp batteries, and thought I'd be good to go. Well, number one, <laughs> the cutting holes was mostly about managing batteries. Luckily, our neighbor Brandon put out a cord from the uh, side of his garage for me so I could charge batteries. And basically, I was spending just as much time cutting into as I was going back and forth and charging batteries. So if you choose a system, if you choose to go the way that I did, one, give yourself some grace on how long it's gonna take you. See if your neighbors, see if your friends have some of the batteries and borrow all of their batteries because it takes a lot of juice to cut through this thing. If the trailer is not completely level, there's gonna be a slight torque that is in the side of the sheet metal. When you go ahead and you cut the hole, all of a sudden that last little notch that you pop out, boom, it kind of gives way and you realize how much tension is in there. So some of the other things that we could have done that I would have done differently, you can rent a saw that has like a 12 inch blade, runs off of gas, and compared to a five inch disc, the lines would have been much truer and you wouldn't have to rework it. Besides cutting the hole, I would say you're spending twice as much time reworking the hole because you don't want to cut it too large. Before you cut the holes, you have to draw a line on your storage container. And so what I did is I just took a straight edge, our level, and you go ahead and you hit the lines of when it's out. Question is, how do you draw that line straight on the parts that are dented in. Well, we took tape. We took just regular uh, painting tape, that blue tape from 3M, and you go ahead and you connect those lines. So I peel, I kept the tape there and just with a pencil went over that line. And you don't wanna cut it too large because when you cut the hole too large and you go to fill in with silicone around the outside, that's a pretty large gap that you have to cover and you can't just easily take your finger and go down and smooth that over. When you take a look at some of these close-ups, you're gonna see that the silicone is imperfect. So the other thing that you need to think of is protective gear. Depending on what angle you're at while you're on a ladder trying to do the top parts, and especially if you have a beard, you get little metal shards all over the place. I just reeked of burnt metal at the end of the day. So we're up here. I've got no shower whatsoever to clean up with. The other thing is just get a protective shield for your face. 
but also gloves. Um, I ended up using the gloves that are rated for chainsaw and I thought they would be good and you can see that there are burn marks in them in a spot where I just had to be close try to rework it. You know you don't want the holes too large you cut the holes the first time we're going to talk about framing in a moment but depending on what you're using for framing without Heather I would have been dead in the water because we made it out of two by fours it's heavy and you're sticking it in there and it's hard to see exactly where it's catching so to have one person hold it look around or get another person's eyes then you go back and you rework it and then you rework it and then you rework it and if you don't take off from the right spots again you're going to get some large gaps with a larger saw with a 12 inch blade right down the road so to give you some perspective on how much time it took, 5 milliamp battery is not inexpensive. Well, 5 milliamp battery, this is supposed to be so big. Basically each cut, especially when you're getting started and you don't know what you're doing, was a 5 milliamp battery. So one, two, three, four charges. But on top of it, reworking each one of them, one, two, three, four, basically eight charges of five milliamp batteries. I had two of them, and you figure it takes two, two and a half hours to charge one up. Guys, do not do the cordless route in cutting holes in a storage container, even with DeWalt. All right, so now let's talk about framing. I want you guys to brainstorm with me a little bit. If you have found our channel, you probably found some other ones. And it seems like everybody welds a frame in for the windows and the doors. Did I have access to someone who could do that? Yeah, but I kind of wanted to do it myself. So I started thinking, and if I'm not gonna weld it in at my house, it's not welded in, right? So we can do this with wood. And I came across this channel, which we'll put a link to. And I kind of followed his advice. Now here's the thing that I'm telling you. Even if you find a great idea on YouTube, you have to, you're ultimately responsible for what you do. So now if you're gonna use wood, there's a couple of different things that you could do. You take a look at a lot of buildings, it's a nice hardwood that's on the outside, it's painted, it's beautiful. But how does that meld with a metal storage container? You can fill in the gaps and everything like that, but also from an aesthetic standpoint, it seems like metal with metal would be good. On top of it, you know, wood is expensive, especially really nice hardwoods and things like that. And we're trying to do this under a budget. So what's the best low cost solution? Well, I ended up making the frame out of two by fours and then covered it with metal. So you can see the frame that I made, very simple. Basically a double two by four box for each one of them. You get the dimensions of the rough cut in from the instructions on each window and each door. Trust them, don't try to overthink it. Go exactly with what they're saying, what they're doing. When you go ahead and decide on how you're gonna cover it, that's where I trusted this other YouTube channel. And he made it sound so simple. Now he might be a contractor, so he has access to other equipment, other metal and things like that. I didn't. I just, when I started down this line, I assumed that I could get it at Menards, Lowe's, Home Depot, nothing there. But of course, I'm, I'm down this line, I have to, I, they did it in, in the video, so what? I should be able to do it. Is we have a place that's called Discount Steel in Minneapolis. So I went back to the scrap area and they had this steel that is normally shut, cut in four by 10 sheets. I got four by eight sheets. That was scrap to them, perfect for us. And when you picked it up, whoop, 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 it was wobbly. So I should be able to bend this, no problem. No. I cut down a piece with the right angle grinder. That was super simple. But in trying to bend it around the two by four frame, 
I used vice grips, I did all of this. It did not make a good right angle whatsoever. I used nails and it had this kind of like button look effect trying to hold it in place, but you could see that the metal was still fighting those nails. So now I have to go and solve another problem. And I found a place, they cut down the sheets for me. I had four of them and they bent it into a U shape. So now all I had to do was cut the angles. Well, now you have this U shape, you get a blade for your miter saw and it's still kind of wobbly steel. So I had to put a two by four inside to hold it, but now still, you know, that square and you're trying to cut a right angle, this side is gonna be a little bit more wobbly than this side. I don't know how true those cuts were, but now I cut it down, I've got it so it's covered, even though it was difficult, right? The end product's gonna be there. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good, right? We were up here on a rainy day, a lot of condensation in the air. We got the heaters inside, it's nice and toasty warm. Well, when we woke up in the morning, all along that metal edge was condensation. It is transferring the energy from outside. In retrospect, I would not have done that. Make a two by four frame, that's good. And then just use some finishing wood that's nice to cover it. Don't worry about that. Made of wood, it's real sturdy. Especially if you're gonna paint like we are, you're gonna paint over it anyways and seal it all up. So what's the big deal? So in the end, do not do what we did. Do not do what was in the video that I linked make your own frame, start off with a two by four, cover it with wood. I think that's the best choice. The first frame in. Can you peek out and say hi? Wave. <laughs> hmm. You smell like a hard working man. <laughs> that's what we're calling that. <laughs> no, you smell like metal and fire. <laughs>